Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at the pulse-pounding premiere issue of Warlock, issue number nine. Now, how is that possible? How could this be the premiere issue? Well, before this, it was Strange Tales. So, uh, Strange Tales is one of those Marvel comics that has a, a, a strange history. Strange Tales started out as a, as a horror sci-fi anthology uh, uh, with short stories, and it, it was like Steve Ditko's home. He, he, that was like his comic. And then around, I think it was 101, it became uh, half the Human Torch. You know, the Human Torch was the most popular member of the Fantastic Four, so he, at that point, so he had a, a half of Strange Tales. The, the science fiction horror was kind of dwindling down, and the superheroes were on the rise. So uh, Strange Tales was, Human Torch was given half of Strange Tales, and then the other half was uh, the, the same. And then around 110, Strange Tales was... The Human Torch and Doctor Strange. It was the first appearance of Doctor Strange. After a while, the Human Torch kind of dwindled, his, his flame dimmed, and it was given to uh, Nick Fury. And that's what it was until the end of the series. I think it was 168. And then in 16, uh, 167, I don't know, something around there. And then Doctor Strange got his own comic, and Doc, and and uh, Nick Fury got his own comic. And then later on, they revised just the numbering and they gave it to Adam Warlock. And then after around what issue 181, they just dropped it and started Warlock at issue number nine. So how's that for, for confusing? <laughs> because, all right. So this is the premiere. This is the first Adam Warlock comic to, to have the title of, of Warlock. Okay, there you go. Now a little bit of history of the character. The character was originally called Him. And he debuted it in the Fantastic Four. And then uh, he, what happened, there was like a conclave of, of scientists that wanted to create like the supreme being, a, a scientific supreme being. And they created this genetic cosmic powered being called him. And then uh, he got defeated. He was a one shot, you know, one and done kind of, kind of, of foe. But uh, Jack Kirby brought him back to fight Thor. And then, uh, then, then he was kind of done. I, 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 you know, you know, I showcased the, the, the Thor. I mistakenly thought that was his first appearance. But, uh, you know, I was wrong. I'm, a, I'm wrong a lot. and Because I, I do this from my, my, my Johnny memory. But uh, he was kind of forgotten about. And then Jim Starlin brought back him and really recreated him to the point where I think Jim Starlin is really the creator of Adam Warlock. Because him and Adam Warlock are are. are Two completely different characters, even though they are. So I, I just wonder now, does anybody know more than me? Is there any copyright people? Does this mean Jim Starlin's going to get creator credit when, when Adam Warlock eventually debuts in the uh, in the Marvel Universe movies? I don't know. You know, could, I don't that, that would be that would be crummy if the, if they don't, because uh, Jim Starlin created Adam Warlock. Right? And that's this character right here. Look at that cover. Oh my God, that is 70s comic book glorious Jim Starlin artwork. Oh my God. And we got the Magus in the background. I love this cover. If you like old comic books, you love this cover. Just look how wonderfully dated and cheesy the, the big disco collar. Oh my God, this, this is just, this is comic books. And Jim Starlin, I don't really know what, what, what his deal is, but he was like given like free reign. And like he had like a, a grand cosmic story in his head that was, he was just unfolding across like so many different comic books. You know, it's all one gigantic epic story. It, he, he created out of Warlock. He created Thanos. He, you know, he didn't create Captain Marvel, you know, Marvel, but he reimagined Marvel and made it his character. And it, it was just, he explored the universe and, and all this, like all that cosmic stuff that you know about Marvel was, was from Jim Starlin. Matter of fact, like, I think that the Marvel, the glue that held the MCU movies together, the the backstory was all Jim Star Starlin. All right, so let's let's open it up after uh, four minutes of, of pontificating. Here we got the Johnson Smith. I, I just love these a gigantic ghost, X-ray specs, secret rocket pen radio. That is, that is actually pretty cool. Hey, look, John, there's my bracelet. Because you wouldn't know it was. It wasn't, you wouldn't think it would me unless I had that bracelet. That, that was difficult to say. Planet of the Apes mask. Oh, so if I wore that mask, but I had that on, I think I would, I'd give it away. All right. All right. So here we have a glorious splash page, the infinity effect. Note, this is before the infinity gems. So th this is a lot before the infinity gems. I think like almost like 10 years or so. So let's look at the Indicia. 
okay, this is copyright 1975, but when, when was the actual date? <sighs> October 1975, yes. Okay, so Fussing Len Wein. So the, the, I had to look up what the credits meant because uh, it's, it's uh, th they don't really, they don't really, uh, Fussing, what does that mean? So Len Wein is the editor, okay? Blotting is Steve Laliola, and I always say his name, but he, he is the inker. Scribbling, uh, Tom Orz, I can never pronounce his name, but he's the letterer. Everything else, Jim Starlin. So Jim Starlin is the uh, is the colorist, the artist, and the writer. So this is, this is, for the most part, Jim Starlin's baby. And look at this, glorious. Who's that? That's Gamora, the deadliest woman in the universe. That's Adam Warlock. That's Pip the Troll. I'd never like that character. And who's that? Why, that's the Magus. And who's the Magus? Well... You'll see. I think they explain the his origin in this. So let's look at this. I, I always love this. This is just a, a thing of the glorious past up here. Born to be Earth's man of the future, then forged to abandon his native planet because of alien ways, he wanders the stars seeking life. Gifted with ultra strength, paranormal reflexes and perceptions, the power of levitation and the curse of, vamp of the vampire soul gem, he stands uniquely alone among the heavens. The power of Adam Warlock. The Soul Gem. Yes, that is the original Infinity Stone. That's the Infinity Stone that we knew about before the, you know, that's the hip. <laughs> that's the Infinity Stone before the Infinity Stones are cool. <laughs> I don't know. I amuse, I amuse myself. I amuse myself. Somebody has to. All right. So when he turns around and he shows, but this is Adam Warlock in the future. Adam Warlock. 5,000 years in the future is going to evolve into the mages. And how do you know he's evil? Because look at that fro. He's got an Art Garfunkel fro. And that could only mean one thing, evil, okay? So he does not want to become the mages. And the mages, I think it's a, it's a great problem because he can't kill and defeat his greatest enemy because that would kill him, okay? He has to guide Adam Warlock into becoming evil. And she's, this is really weird. And this is one of the things I like about Jim Jim Shooter. This is one of the, I do like Jim Shooter. One of the things I, 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 I like about Jim Starlin is this, like, I don't know, like, just he, he thinks different, okay? And I think that's what makes him a genius, is just different thinking. But Gamora is having a conversation, but they're both ignoring her. No, not because of the patriarchy, but because in his memory, she wasn't there. So she is the anomaly in time. So she shouldn't be there because uh, because when this happened from the Magus' point of view, Gamora wasn't there. But yet she is there. Thus, paradoxes ensue. Look at this glorious artwork. Look at this glorious artwork. So I love that he's golden and then he's silver. You know, what, what is that? Uh, Laurel and Taparion, the two, two, two trees of, of Valinor. I, I'm, I'm going through a, a Lord of the Rings kick right now. I'm rereading the Similarian. All right. But look, look at the stained glass floor. Everything's very religious. And okay, so Adam Warlock has been exploring the universe. And it's like a, a Star Wars type of universe where he goes to different planets and there's all alien races and the, the, there's bars and, you know, uh, inns and stuff like that. But w one of the things that I like is there's the, uni the Universal Church of Harmony. And it's this like huge church run by the matriarch. And it's like this church of universal peace. But they're really oppressive and everything. Think of it like the like a church of Dolores Umbridges. And they 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 want to recruit him to be like the, a messiah. And he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. So now, so that's the backstory. So now they're fighting the mages. And now, how can he defeat the mages? Where the mages is just, you know, for, in role-playing terms, he's he's more leveled up. He's, he's him, more powerful. And look at the, this glorious Kirby Crackle. So the mages is toying with him. Because like I said, the mages can't kill him. The mages can't defeat him because it's him. And he can't kill him. So he can only goad him into becoming him, which is, I think, a, a really cool task. Let's just look at these fights. He's just blasted them. Yeah, I don't know. Just, just so cool. Look, look at this artwork, guys. Are you with me on this? Am I crazy? Is this just not glorious? And I've seen this reprinted. They, this is reprinted in a, in a, a Marvel uh, special edition, I think it was called. And it was a, it was Really nice, crisp white paper with new updated inking, and I just I don't know I don't like it. I I 
Is anybody with me? I, I like this old newsprint paper and I like the way the ink is absorbed into the newsprint paper. Like whenever I see like reprinted on, on pure white, better quality paper, there's no, and, and it's, you know, computer coloring. It just looks like so bright that it looks artificial. This, <laughs> kill me, kill me, uh, you know, whatever you want to say, but uh, I, I think this looks like natural or maybe it's just what I'm, what I'm used to. I don't know, but th I, I love this old, this old coloring. It's, it's something about the, the new coloring. It's just too bright. But anyway, what is this called? Flat? Is this called flat? Anybody know anything about the coloring more than me? But I look at this and I love how, the, you know, the, the dichotomy of, you know, the, the, the present face, the future face, or the present face, the past face, depending on your point of view. But Jim Starlin is, is big on, on, on that. N time travel and, and paradoxes are tough to uh, pull off. And only few writers, if, they, oh man, th there's, there's a 2000 story time travel story written by Alan Moore. That is my favorite time st travel story. I got, I, I got to dig it out and, and showcase that one. That is awesome. So what's he doing? He's explaining his evolution in, in his process. This is the matriarch of, of the uh, of the church. Uh, she, 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 uh, he, he's you know he's he's a true supervillain. He's explaining his processes, how he got to where he is. And Adam's like he's like you're doomed. You're going to become me. You know you'll see. You're going to evolve. You're going to warp. Your perceptions are going to change, and you're going to become me. And there's nothing you could do about it, except. You know, Gamora is not this. He's like, do something. And she's like, I can't. I'm afraid. I can't do anything. But why why is he afraid? Because the mages could just could just kill with a thought. He's that powerful. And and uh he he he, he can't kill Adam Warlock for, for obvious reasons, but Gamora, he, he could just think about killing her and and she'll be dead. So she's doing what Gamora does best, being, you know in in, in the movies they don't explain like she is an assassin. You know, she's she's not get into your face and, and beat the crap out of you. She's an assassin. So she bides her time and she sneaks. You know, she's not going to jump into a room and fight off 20 guys. She is going to sneak, figure out the weak point, infiltrate, and, and then take you out and get out. And that's why she's deadly. That's that's why I like Gabor. Um, and she said, I might have to contact my master. This is beyond me. I might need help. And that... If you see how badass she is, that is like, what? And even Pip's like, you're, you're not going to do anything. So he runs out and he's amused by Pip. He knows Pip isn't a, isn't a threat. So he just knocks him down. So he's, you know, he wants people to gloat. He's all ego. And she's just like, all right, I got to contact my master. So she releases her senses. Gamora, telepathic linkage has been achieved. Report. It is as, I, it is as you predicted. So who is she contacting? Da -da -da -da. What's uh? Let's look at some ads. She's contacting this kid. This kid's going to come and sell grit. Here you go, mages. So here she is. She's in her telepathic report. Just look at this artwork. It's glorious. Glorious. Jim Starlin does not get enough praise. He, you know, he should be given billions of dollars from all these Marvel movies. Just just look at this. I mean, tell me, even in the Ant-Man movies, when they go to the, 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 the quantum realm... It's, look at this. Steve Ditko and, and Jim Starlin, J Jack Kirby. Oh, my God. Just so good. And here, you know, a lot of gloating. Look at this pose. Hi. Whatever. And he's just he's just messing with Adam's... I almost said Adam Strange. Adam Warlock. And now he's like, I'm going to blast you. And this blast is going to activate your soul gem. Uh, you know, he's got the soul gem up here. You can barely see it. And the soul gem is going to activate. And what it's going to do, it's going to put you in a 5,000-year coma coma and in that thousand years you're gonna you know explore your inner self and that's that's what will cause you to evolve into me and for whatever reason that's going to summon the in-betweener and the in-betweener will like facilitate this 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 cosmic metamorphosis and th this is this is the first appearance of the in-betweener so aren't we lucky the in-betweener is like this uh his realm that space between fact and fantasy, you will, I, you'll strive to elude him, but the radiation emanating from your body will infallibly lead him to you. So, the in between, he exists nowhere. He, in, he exists between reality and fact, truth and lies. He's this, like he just walks on the thresholds of existence. He's one of these abstract philosophical concepts given life form by by Jim 
I keep saying wanting to say shooter by Jim Starlin's imagination. And ah, the man is a genius. Uh, I, I, I just really, <laughs> really appreciate uh, Jim Starlin's work. Really do. Look at this artwork. This is all out of his mind. So now he's mind is reeling. He, he's telling him you're going to turn into that cocoon. That's one of Adam Warlock's original powers is uh, anytime he gets almost killed or basically killed. I don't, I don't know. His body forms this cocoon and it repairs himself. So he just like. He can't die. Like when he fought the Fantastic Four, they basically beat him to death. And uh, he regenerated into the Thor comics. Thor beat him. He went into this cocoon, beat him to death. And then the uh, High Evolutionary found him on Counter Earth. And that's what started all this stuff. So he's saying, You're going to stay in this cocoon for 5,000 years. And when it opens up, you're, you're, you're disco dancing. Look at that. Oh, it's glorious, glorious. He could become super. Maybe Adam Warlock inside the cocoon will take a bodybuilding course. Okay, that'll be his choice. He'll learn to fly, he'll write some poems, play guitar. And then when he's almost done, he will customize vans in order. That, that, that's where that afro is going to come from. All right, enough jokes. So uh, when you come out, you're, you're going to have to reestablish your cred. Look at this. So he comes out, all these aliens and empires, 5,000 years in the future. You're going to have to beat them all down you know nobody's going to take your word that you you know the world is, the, the universe is a harsh place and you're going to have to earn your right but you are the mages you are you're 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 you know, you're the duke of new york you're a number one now look at this and then you, everybody will bow down before you and you will have a glorious empire look at all of this look at all of this this page is amazing a lot a lot of dialogue and i like how it's the shazam bolt you know from captain Marvel. He's just onward ships, empires expanding. Look at him. He's just just mad with power. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to crush everybody. You're going to crush everybody. He's beaten the, the matriarch. And, you know, between Adam Warlock's empire and her influence, the religion, you, you, you're going to dominate all this. He's like, no, I will, I will not do this. I'll do, he's like, yes, you will. Look at that. So... They both have the soul stone because he has it in the future and he has it in the past and they're like linked through this. So now they're doing that Harry Potter two wand things, bless each other. I'll respond. So what he's saying is, I know what you're going to do. Why? Because I did it. So when you're going to bless, I'm going to respond like this and then you're going to do this and I'm going to respond like that. Look at this. This is To me, this is a very uh, Steve Ditko-like panel. He's like, I'm going to warp your reality. Well, how do I know this? Because I, you know what's happened to me and you'll pay. Reality's getting warped around here. Adam Warlock, and make no mistake, Adam Warlock is vastly powerful. He's he's one of Marvel's most powerful characters. So, for him to be on the ropes like this, this this was this was pretty scary. What, what powers does Adam Warlock have? Whatever power Adam Warlock needs, he's he's one of those. And then he has a, you know an Infinity Stone before they were the Infinity. He has the Soul Gem, so he has the power over souls. So he he has whatever power he needs. And I like that the the Soul Gem. They kind of made it like Adam, uh, Adam Warlock, like Mike, Michael Moorcock's, like Elric's sword. It sometimes fires off and like sucks people's souls out, basically killing them against Adam Warlock's uh, will. He did it to a few people and then they live forever within the, within the soul gem in a, in a paradise afterlife. So look at, look out. So this isn't just like mental perceptions. This is reality is warping. This this battle is warping reality to the point where Pip the Troll and, and Gamora are like, they 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 can't trust their, their senses. This is, I don't know, this is cool. So she's taking out this knife. The special tip dagger whose blade will even slay one such as the mages. They, they always have these like uh, ultimate artifacts. And this is what her master is communicating and telling her. Use this dagger. So he he warps this dagger to her. And he's like, this this will take out the mages. So now he, he like, the laws of physics don't, don't appear. He's just walking through walls. You know, he is, a, he is beyond, the, you've got 12 seconds before you know, the ultimate, the, the, this process becomes irreversible. You will become the mages. I love this. So here we got the letters page, Cosmic Comments. And Nichols, I, I just, I, I always say, Peter Sanderson, I feel like I know that name, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, K.L. Robin. I like looking at the names. I like looking where they're from because I, I, I just, sub, like, I, a letter page a little while ago, I, we saw Kurt Biasek, who ended up writing the one of my favorite comics of all time, Astro City. And uh, the Thunderbolts. I'd, I'd like looking for uh, professionals. It's just, it's just cool. Kung Fu and Karate. So now this, in this 12 seconds, 
she's got to kill the mages or 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 uh, fate is sealed. So now they're fighting. Look look at these panels. This kind of looks like an Andy Warhol, you know, some pop art. Look, look at this panel, this panel, this page. I don't know. I just really, really like it. The, the sparse back, well, not even sparse backgrounds, not existent backgrounds. Everyone's got a different. This is definitely like, this is Storenko inspired, if you ask me. Jim Storenko. I, I, I just look at, no words, no words needed. The countdown, zero. And blah. You ain't, ain't going to get the mages with that knife. It ain't going to be that easy. It ain't going to be that easy. He 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 is omniscient. He knew that you were going to do that. He He's beating you up. Take it out out of Warlock. And now tough, tough crunchies. I don't know what I was going to say. Bad word. T you know, tough on you. And it's it's locked. You know, Adam Warlock has defeated. The process has begun. You are now fated to become the Magus. And he's like, what? And I'm sorry. He goes, I'm about to become a god. I've been a god before, you know. He was a god of counter earth, and now he's talking about how the soul gem. This this guy he took, he defeated Krator and sucked his soul out. He's like, I did that unwillingly. He goes, can you you know can you imagine how bad I will be? Kind of like Frodo with the One Ring, you know, or or, or Gandalf wouldn't take the ring, or Galadriel, better example, when she says I will become beautiful and terrible, and you know, if 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 I embrace the ring, well, that's what he's afraid. He's afraid that if uh, he becomes the uh, whatever the mages he will unlock all the powers of the soul gem and he'll become powerful and he's he, he's tormented by it he's like well, what am i gonna do i don't want to become this because existential angst and he's just gloating he's like can't do anything now because the process has begun can't interfere and now he's going talking to the matriarch you know don't worry my existence has been assured and you know all of her creepy goon guys and he's just going around issuing orders my my ultimate victory has been achieved and now we got some Captain America. We got the thing over there. Baseball card. This was fun. I like this even though I wasn't a baseball card guy. But uh, you get a box of cupcakes and on the back they had uh, baseball cards. And inside the box they had the flip side with all the stuff. And you cut them off. You cut them out. I actually did that even though I wasn't into baseball cards. I, just, I don't know. I thought that was kind of fun. So he's laying in anguish. There's nothing we can do. He's defeated. You know, the the hero defeated. What what, what are we going to do now? And she's like, well, I contacted my master. And I'll stand back. I'm about to appear. The gate opens. The gate opens. Thanos. Dun, dun, dun. I assure you, Thanos is such a... So th he's the loose cannon now. You know, she, she wasn't supposed to be here. And she summoned her master, who is Thanos. So, you know, the... Uh, it's it's not the way the Magus remembers it. Now the Magus has already walked away. So is Thanos Thanos the only being in the entire universe that Thanos is afraid of is Adam Warlock. And that's Adam Warlock. So what if he becomes the Magus, forget about it. Notice in, in Magus's future there was no Thanos. There was nothing to stop him. So now, next issue Warlock and Thanos battle side by side against a world. So this is the the entire Church of Harmony and, and the and the Magus's empire. Oh my God, you, you guys, you don't want this. This is comic books, guys. This is comic books. All right, ultra power binoculars. We can see into the stars. This. Oh my God, this is it. This is the begin. This is the first time uh, Adam Warlock met met uh, Thanos. This is this is. Cosmic comic books in a nutshell. This is it. You can't get. Uh, I don't know. I, I I could do every hyperbole in the world, and I can, I still cannot convey my excitement over these comic books. This was like religious to me as a kid. I was like, oh my god, oh my god. You know, and I, I if I remember correctly, I missed the next issue because back then it was hard to get to comic book stores. I, I don't even think there was comic book stores, so you just had to stumble upon it, and. The, the stores didn't order the comic books. They were just given. So if this particular issue didn't sell well in my my little market, you didn't see the next issue. Or they so few that it, it might as well... Uh, I, I remember having to track this down. Oh, my God. It, it, it was painful. It was physically painful not to read these... Oh, my God. And I'm, you know, <laughs> I, I, I go crazy. <laughs> I, I, I love this so much. I hope my enthusiasm shows through. But there you go. This is Warlock. This is comic books. This is Shakespeare to me. This, this, this... This was like Greek mythology, you know. I, I, I'm so exciting! This is this is love of comic books. You cannot get comic books. I don't think anybody today, and I, I'm going to be the old man, get off my lawn guy. But does anybody making comic books today? 
talking about Marvel and DC, you know, the easy, these independent guys, these, these guys are, to me, they're the future of comic books. They're the punk rockers, you know, standing up against the man. But in 1975, this was, these guys loved comics, you know, and it showed, look at the work, look at the craft, look at this, I don't know, the imagination. That, that to me gets it more than anything else, the imagination in this. Oh my God. And where do you see how they defeat Adam Warlock? I already showcased that comic, okay? That was a, a Marvel 2-in-1 annual. I forget what number it was, one or two. Oh, my God. And I remember finding that in the 7-Eleven, and I was like, oh, my God, Mom. Like, she knew. My mother knew she had to buy me that comic book. I would not accept a no for an answer. It would have been physically detrimental to my health not to get that comic book. All right? <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thanks a lot. I appreciate every one of you guys. I appreciate the comments. Thank you. I don't know what's going on, but I I'm, I'm seem to be getting a, like subscribers again. There was like a little bit of a, of a lull for a while, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm enjoying this so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.